everybody. Happy Sunday. Sunday before Christmas. I can't believe next Sunday is Christmas, right? Okay, so I'm in my kitchen today and I'm making a couple of meals to stash away. And I've always wanted to try um, Claire's Depression Cooking. If you go out to YouTube and look for Depression Cooking, you will see a channel of Claire who passed away but she was in her 90s and her grandson many of you will know her her grandson uh, was trying to just talk his grandmother into sharing what it was like to live through the depression how they made it and this was years ago he was going into digital you know, like photography and stuff and um, his grandmother said well we always had hot we always had potato we always had, you know, basic things like onion, potato, and hot dogs were very economical then. Well, they're not so much now. They're expensive, depending on the kind you get. I, this is all beef. But a meal that was very popular was chopping up an onion and some potato, because you had it in the house. And then what Claire did, well, and she said, you know, we would make good of those potatoes because her dad would get a big sack of them and bring them home. So you get a little oil in your pan and chop up a few potatoes and some onion. And then you just put a little water in there to make a little sauce. About a cup. And then if you have jarred sauce, you can use that. But this is Claire's recipe. A little bit of tomato sauce. Not a lot. She did about two big tablespoons from a jar, so that's what I'm using. I'm using one of these. No salt. Tomato. Because hot dogs, no matter which way you go, they're salty. So this is going to just cook on low and slow now. I'm just going to keep it there and bring it up to a boil just till the potatoes simmer. And I'll have a little bit of a sauce taste. And really, the, the, the beef uh, hot dogs are great. I'm using three ballpark beef uh, chopped down hot dogs, three medium russet potatoes. And just a drop of water, about maybe a fourth of a cup to a half of a cup. About a half a cup of cold water. And about maybe two and a half to three tablespoons of sauce. I guess you could put more in it if you wanted to. I was thinking about this the other day. Long story, but I, so I won't share it. I ended up ordering online. And I ended up with SpaghettiOs. And I don't eat SpaghettiOs. I mean, I'm sure I ate them when I was younger. I can remember... Once in a while, getting them for my kids, it would have to be a real treat because I really didn't, I didn't usually buy spaghetti meals. But nothing wrong with it, but um, I remember my son liked Chef Boyardee beef raviolis and stuff like that. Um, but anyways, I ended up with a wrong order. I'll tell you real quick. I ordered from Walmart two days ago, and it takes about two days to get your groceries. My groceries got here, the first thing I noticed was there was a whole lot of bags there. And I went down to meet the driver, and she was already in the car taking her off. And I literally chased her with my socks on in the snow to try to get... And she just kept waving at me like, hi. I was like waving back like, no, come back, come back. Because the first thing I saw was there was chestnuts on top and a big bag of potatoes. And I already had potatoes in the house, so I didn't order them, so I knew something was wrong. And I didn't get chestnuts. So I lugged all the groceries upstairs, looked through everything, and sure enough, I could see there was a tag there that three of the bags belonged to somebody else. So after calling every app, after getting on every app, on every device I could find that would download it, and talking to people all over the place, and being told, ma'am, just keep the groceries there and we can come back in two days and get it. I was like, are you kidding me? Someone wants these this food. Somebody, This is somebody's Christmas dinner. There was 
a five pound bag of russet potatoes, a three pound bag of Yukon gold potatoes, two three pound bags of red potatoes. I already had, I already had like eight or nine potatoes in the house. So I was like, I don't have any room for all this. A bag of peeled roasted chestnuts, two big uh, chicken broth true value ones. I don't even, I don't use that kind. I use low sodium or nothing. A big jar of Aborio rice, 32 ounces. I never can afford Aborio rice, so I never buy it. A big thing of golden raisins and currant raisins, sun made. Uh, one onion, I knew my package, I already ordered, I ordered two onions. Um, and then what else was in there? Um, a case of spaghetti, <laughs> a case of spaghettios with um, francs in it, which I never even thought of. A little, I guess, yeah, hot dog. And then a case of spaghettios with um, little meatballs. And then two big jars of just plain spaghettio. Um, what else? There was uh, more chicken broth. There was shallots, um, breadcrumbs. I mean, all this stuff. It must have been about forty dollars worth of groceries there. So I called everywhere, got nowhere. Just kept getting, ma'am, just keep it there. Somebody will pick it up in the next couple days, or just keep it. I'm like I can't just keep it. What am I going to do? Nobody eats this much potato. What am I going to do with all this potato? I can't just keep chestnuts, potato, and all this stuff, right? <laughs> I finally got a gentleman at the 1-800 number, and he said, No worries, ma'am. You keep it or you donate what you want to. But we, we've we already taken care of uh, the order and gotten a new order to the person and I just didn't feel comfortable about it. I was like, no, 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 no. You come get this food. Somebody's waiting for their food. You see chestnuts, raisins, Borio rice. You know, somebody's, that's for their holiday meal, right? So I was like, no, 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 no. Oh, there was condensed milk. There was uh, cilantro in there. There was uh, peppers. So there was perishable stuff and another celery, which I just didn't have room for in my refrigerator. I was like, no, 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 no. Finally, I got a gentleman from, um, gonna run away on me here. A gentleman from the Webster store who explained, I'm gonna use a little more. I'm gonna use all of it because I don't know what to say anymore. A gentleman, and you can make the show on, I guess. Um, a gentleman from the Webster store who called me. And he said, ma'am, thank you so much for reaching out. I see you've been talking to the bot, the apps. The, I see everything you typed. I see who you spoke to. Um, you won't be charged for that food. You can keep it. It's like, I'm only one person. I can't eat all these potatoes. No, I'm not keeping it. He said, or you can donate it or give it to your neighbors. Chores. I said, you've got to be kidding me. He said, yeah, it's a real liability, but... We can't take the food back once we once we uh, deliver it. We can't come back and get it. It just gets thrown out if it comes back to the store. So you keep it and do what you want with it. Well, I decided I would open up one of those spaghetti one. And it took me back to like when I was a child. I must have eaten it when I was a child. I don't remember ever eating SpaghettiOs, but uh, maybe I tasted it when I made it for my kids or my son. Or, I don't know. My, my daughter said she loves SpaghettiOs. I'm like, you know, I do remember making it when they were little like a side, but it had to be a real, um, like a real, I don't know, like a occasion to make it, right? Um, so I'm going to keep the lid on it. So this is Claire's recipe, depression cooking, three hot dogs, uh, one large russet potato, two small, that I already had, <laughs> and, uh, almost, almost a whole, like a three-fourths of a medium yellow onion. And then over here, I've got 
in my handy dandy crock pot happening here. I've got what do I have going on here? I've got a potato broccoli soup. See, I had already bought potatoes, so I was like, I bought broccoli, I bought potatoes because I'm going to make a cheddar soup. I'm getting ready to chop down my little flowers and put them in at the end of the celery. Cooks for four hours. Celery, carrot, onion, um, broccoli, chicken broth. I had already bought my chicken broth as low sodium. Um, I put a little paprika in there and nutmeg. Four cups of chicken broth. I supped two cups of chicken broth, two cups of water. Because I'm weird that way. I don't like to use a lot. It needs four hours on high. And then you turn it down. Well, it says keep it on high, but I'm going to turn mine down. Because you got to go by what your heat does that you know it does. This one cooks rather high. So, um, then you whisk together some flour and some heavy cream. I'm using some evaporated milk or some plain milk with some flour. And you pour that in very gently and stir it in. And then you grate up two cups of cheese, Colby Jack or cheddar or whatever you have. I'm using... A little of my leftover cheddar and a little of my leftover Colby. Stir that in and then you let that cook for 40 more minutes. And then you could just, I guess if you had an immersion blender, which is what I have, you could just blend it down. Um, that's a potato, broccoli, cheddar soup. Um, but I don't want to use my immersion blender in my, uh, oh that's hot, in my uh, slow cooker. So I'm going to use... Um, forks and I'm going to take some out and use my blender very carefully. Just blend some up. Or I might take some out and put it in a different pan and then use my immersion blender. I don't know. Or I just might use my potato masher like I did for years as I don't want to get that dented at all. Um, that's it. That's it. Um, and then later I'm making some brickle. I got the recipe for the brickle from Farmer Pastor's Wife, Leslie. You just lay out your saltine crackers on a parchment paper or foil, salt tied up. You melt down some brown sugar and some butter, whisk it up, and then you pour it over your saltine crackers and spread it out very gently, but you don't really have to spread it out, it melts in the oven. 350 to 375, five minutes. Take that out, let it sit. You could put it outside if you wanted or in your freezer real quick. But first, you take a pack of um, take a pack of um, chocolate chips, and I've got some mini ones that I didn't use up for another candy, so I'm going to use those. You can use dark chocolate or milk chocolate. The milk chocolate with a little dark chocolate is what I did. And then you just spread that over it. If you had some pecans in the house, you could throw that on top. I'm using Heath Bar, um, which is the more traditional, they call it candy crack or um, brickle. So I've got some toffee Heath stuff here. Uh, that I'm using, some Heath, Heath bits. And then the other one I'm making is, uh, I've already made two of them, is a peppermint bark, which is so simple. They have um, the almond, the big uh, white chocolate, and the baking chips on sale everywhere now. Walmart. You could get it at the Dollar General. Um, and that you can do right in the crock pot. Just melt your, and I got that recipe from Leslie, farmer, pastor, farming, pastor's wife. Um, such a beautiful recipe. She's been making a ton of candy. Um, and she's using almond bark, peppermint extract, and a little bit of the candy cane crushed in the white chocolate in her crock pot with some crushed up pretzels. And then you just set it up on 
a parchment paper. You don't even have to refrigerate it. It sets right up. You can melt some of your chocolate in your microwave. And um, what I did was I put a little almond extract in my chocolate and just drizzled it over the top. And that's what I did for people I know around um, the apartment complex that I live in. Um, because, um, I, you know, I've lived here almost 22 years now. And there's some people that we just know each other. So I'm making little snack bags of candy this year. It's easier than doing cookies. <laughs> I'm not doing cookies. And I am crafting. I'm making little snowflakes and angels for people. And that's all I'm doing. So um, it's enough. It's enough. I think on Christmas Eve I'll probably make some peppers and sausage, some turkey sausage and peppers, and just have a sandwich, watch a Christmas story for the millionth time, <laughs> millionth, I've already watched it, I've decided I'm going to rename my cat Dustin, Ralph, because he has become a cat ornament on my tree, and he has... Almost poked his eye out about a bajillion times. Haven't you, Dustin, say hello to everybody? Mr. Dustin Ralphie? Yeah, Dustin Ralphie. He has taken apart the angels I've made. He's run off with my... He's run off with my... My yarn. He's run off with my angels. You've been busy. You're a busy, busy Christmas baby. Ha huh? now you want my pillows now. Mm-hmm. Do laundry. <sighs> Just a bus then. Just a bus then. Say hello to everybody. Mom is making a video. Say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. All right. So he's been a good boy. I'm putting back together my shelf in there. I bought every spice for the end of the world but ground pepper. Unless. Unless it's in my spices up there, which I have to climb up there to see. Not a very smart place to put my spices, huh? I was determined I was going to make this my spice drawer, but you really need a utensil drawer. And she only got two drawers to work with. Um, yeah. So this looks really good. And it's done. You can get a fork in your... You get a fork in it, it's done. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look at how nice. But I want those potatoes to fall off the fork. So I'm going to let them cook a little longer. Yep. And I put a little paprika in it. So, I mean, uh, I did just a dash of salt because potatoes need salt. They do need the water to help them, so I might put a little more water in. Oh, well. A little. I don't want it too concentrated and saucy. I'm diluting it down. One, one, one. That was a good idea, somebody thinks in heaven. Okay. All right. That's what I'm doing. So this was a common meal made in the Depression era. If you go to Depression Cooking with Clara, you'll see her making this. Beautiful lady. I miss her so much. She shared so much with the YouTube community. Yep. Alright, so I guess you could jazz it up. If you had Parmesan cheese, but who needs more salt? Uh, I put a little onion powder and a little speck of garlic powder in it. I did put a little bit of thyme and a little bit of paprika in it. Uh, I guess I'll taste a piece just to see if it needs anything. So I really did not go heavy on the salt. I'm going to taste a, a hot dog with a potato. I don't want to burn my mouth. Oh, wow. That's actually delicious. I would have never dreamed that would be that good. 
I mean, I thought it would be good. A tomato sauce with a little water with hot dog with potato and onion and a little bit of seasoning. Nice. Sure hope I got black pepper. I'm down to almost no pepper. Alright, so I'm going to let this just cook like that. So it cooks down, but my potatoes get just a little bit more soft. And that is Claire's Depression Recipe. And this crock pot recipe in two hours will be ready to get its cheese. And only four hours and maybe, maybe five at the most. I would turn it down once you put the cheese in it and stir it little bits at a time and then the flour and the whatever cream you're going to use I would definitely um, turn it down on my crock pot but somebody else's you might you can keep it on high I guess and I got this recipe from slow cooker broccoli cheddar potato soup baked by Rachel what is the name of it? Bakedbyrachel.com. Very nice recipe. Cup of carrots, half a cup of celery. I got a little more of everything in there. One and a fourth cup of yellow onion, four cloves of garlic. I used minced and some garlic powder. Three and a half cups of potatoes peeled cubed into small pieces. Four cups of broccoli. I used two crowns of broccoli. One and a half teaspoon of dried thyme. I used a little less than that. One and a half teaspoon of white pepper or black. I didn't have white. Two and a half teaspoons of salt. I didn't use that much because actually I'm playing around with the idea of putting some of my hot dogs in that too. I'm not sure. Um, probably not, but I really just don't want a lot of salt in it. Um, four and a half cups of chicken broth. I used two cups of low sodium chicken broth and two and a half cups of water. One and a half cups of heavy cream. I'm going to use about one cup of evaporated milk, light, and the rest in um, 2% milk. One fourth cup of all purpose flour and eight ounces of Colby cheddar cheese. I'm using about, I'm actually going to throw about two ounces that I have left over of cream cheese with about four ounces of the Colby. So it's going to be more like a white cheddar and a little bit of my, I just want to use up my cheeses. And that's it. John, that looks so good. Oh, rest in peace, Claire. I miss you. I miss you. Beautiful recipe. There's nothing depressing about that. I don't know about it being really economical now because hot dogs are up to five something. No matter where you go, or three. I guess... If you want the healthier ones, but I don't, I don't ever think of hot dogs as healthy. And these are 100% beef, ballpark. So they were like $5.89 at Tops. And so, but back in the day, she said they were so cheap. A lot of times all they had was potato, and they could always get little hot dogs. Right? So you could play with that. You could put a little pickering amount of cheese in it. Put a little basil in it. You could do whatever you wanted. You could put a little rice in it, I guess, if you had rice. Um, you could play with it. It'd be like carb on carb, hot dog. Um, that's it. I hope everybody's having a beautiful and blessed Sunday. And nobody's getting too scared of the Omicron blizzard that's going to hit within the next week. But it is going to hit. It is. So I hope... Those of you that are compromised in any way, older, have any kind of health conditions, will surely um, get your booster if you need it. And folks that haven't been vaccinated will get vaccinated because the winters are hard enough and you don't want to be sick. And take care, everyone. Be well. Bye.